Hello everyone, my name is Nibitanga Inosa and I'm a senior uh, computer science and engineering major. And uh, right now we're in uh, HIFI, which is home of the computer and science and engineering department. And uh, the, what the computer science and engineering tries to do is combine a little bit of software and hardware. So traditionally you'll take a few classes um, in the computer science department, learn about things like algorithms, touch on a little software. But then you also take a few electrical engineering classes um, where you learn about circuits, electromagnetism and things of that nature just to get a little sense of the, the hardware. Uh, so right now we're in one of the lab spaces that students will typically work in um, and the thing that the school really tries to emphasize in students is that they both learn the theoretical concepts in the classroom but also practice it in the lab spaces. So you'll, traditionally you usually spend 50% of your time in the classroom, 50% in a lab space like this where you're, where you're implementing um, the concepts that you learn. And uh, one of the really cool things about the ECC lab that we're in right now is that students can also remotely log in. So even when you're off campus or you're at home, you can still utilize all the machines that, they, that, that, that the school has to provide. Um, so all the lab spaces are equipped with Windows and Linux machines, which is pretty much all you need. Um, and you, it doesn't really matter what type of computer that you have yourself. Um, I have a Mac, some other students have Windows and all that stuff. So you know it doesn't really matter because you can all remotely log in and complete all the things that you have to do. My name is Julia Yaklage. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering. I chose mechanical engineering because it's a really broad discipline that allows you to learn about all sorts of facets of engineering and how we can contribute to the world. This lab helps with all of our senior design projects from storing to finding supplies and having a space to work together as a team. Hi everyone, my name is Chanel Smith. I'm a senior civil engineering major here at Santa Clara. And right now we are in our mechanical testing and failure analysis lab. The purpose of this lab is mainly for structural testing. And behind me here, we have two universal testing machines. The purpose of these machines is to be able to apply a certain amount of force to a specimen of your choosing. For example, concrete or steel. Um, this smaller testing machine behind me can load up to 10,000 pounds of force and the larger one can load up to 100,000 pounds of force to a given material. A little bit more about the civil engineering program here at Santa Clara. We have a 50 to 50 men to women student ratio, 40% women faculty, and we are the second smallest major within the School of Engineering. Civil engineering is all about infrastructure and the growth of civilization, so students in our program learn all about planning, designing, and maintaining things like bridges, buildings, waterways, highways, dams, you name it. The first two to three years of our program, students take foundational courses, and after that they take more focused electives in areas like structural, construction management, transportation, water resources, environmental or geotechnical engineering. And the civil engineering major is within the civil, environmental, and sustainable engineering department. And so our program likes to implement concepts of sustainability into our coursework. For example, we have a construction materials class where students design concrete pillars and replace some of the concrete with sustainable materials and they end up testing those concrete pillars in these universal testing machines. If you want to learn more about the civil engineering program, please see our website. Hey, I, uh, my name is Logan Barnes. Uh, I'm a fourth year electrical engineer and I am involved in IEEE, uh, Ultimate Frisbee, and uh, research in the RF Research Lab. And today I'm going to be taking you uh, through the electrical department and specifically the RF Research Lab. Uh, IEEE is the Institute for Electronics and Electrical Engineers uh, Club here at Santa Clara University. It was how I initially met all of the electrical engineers in my wonderful department uh, when I switched over from bioengineering and we meet uh, every week to discuss uh, what we've done and uh, how we're going to further build on projects that we do quarter. So right here we've got uh, last year's uh, project done in this lab uh, for the senior capstone project. 
this is a radio astronomy uh, horn antenna and the project was a cost-effective radio astronomy setup that is accessible to a more general public to get students more interested in radio astronomy. And next to it we've got a much less impressive uh, PVC pipe uh, attached to copper wire antenna. It's a V-dipole antenna that me and a fellow uh, undergrad student worked on over the summer where we would beam down images from a NOAA weather satellite that passes overhead roughly every hundred minutes and we actually got a couple images to show you here uh, in the lab uh, that we got from it. Typically electrical engineering is one of the lesser known engineering majors and this is due to the fact that lots of high schools don't really cover it uh, but what this means for you is that uh, here at Santa Clara you're going to have a smaller class, more focused attention one-on-one -on -one from the professors, and you're going to have lots more opportunities for research. You'll get to work with very expensive equipment uh, such as spectrum analyzers, field foxes, soldering irons aren't that expensive, but you get to work with them and, and you, you're assigned one-on-one -on -one to each of these uh, pieces of equipment. And uh, one of the most impressive facts, I think, about this RF lab is that you get to work with something that costs about the same amount of money as a car. Uh, these will be about thirty to forty thousand uh, dollars. These are network analyzers. And this, this specific one is actually what helped me land my first uh, technical internship, which I'm still in right now during the school year. Uh, once they saw that I had working hands-on experience with this piece of technology, it's pretty uncommon. Uh, it was a pretty quick hire after that. If you'd like to hear more about our department here at Santa Clara, you can either take a tour or visit us online, uh, scu.edu, check out our website, the Electrical Engineering Department, and uh, we hope to see you around here. Hi, my name is Belen Blanco. I am a fourth year studying bioengineering at Santa Clara. Um, welcome to one of our bioengineering stops. This is uh, 2307, uh, one of our bioengineering labs. It's more so a multi-purpose lab, but I have personally used this for a microfluidics course. Um, bioengineering is our third largest major at the School of Engineering, and within that we have about eight faculty members that are full-time, so it is a slightly smaller department, uh, but what's cool about that is that we're a little bit more close-knit and what's unique about it is we offer three different tracks, which are like emphasis areas. Um, the way I would differentiate those is uh, there's a pre-med track. So the pre-med track is if you're interested in going to med school, of course. Um, but the nice thing about it is that it prepares you really well to take the MCAT, so our students have a higher rate of getting into med school. So how it does that is you take a good amount of your intro biology, chemistry, and also anatomy and physiology courses. And it's still an engineering degree, so there's a lot more things you could do with it. Um, and then if you wanted to take the biomolecular track, that one focuses a lot more on research oriented things, things like working with proteins, things like working with tissue engineering, all the type of smaller lab research type of things. Um, but the way I would differentiate it from the medical device track, which is our other track, is you're kind of focusing more so on bio biology and chemistry in the biomolecular track, whereas in the medical device track, you're focusing a bit more on f physics, um, biomechanics, and a little bit more electrical. That's one thing about this school in general, I think we do get a lot more exposure to presentations and a little bit more research opportunities uh, throughout the classes we take, which is super unique. And we work with a lot of groups, which is also different in terms of like, you get more exposed to interdisciplinary work and working with different types of people. Um, and with that, also, like I said, there is a bit more opportunity for research. So uh, because our, we get to know our professors super well and our class sizes are a bit smaller, there is a bit more opportunity for research. So one example of the research that is done on campus is actually this poster right here. So these were, this research was done by two previous tour guides. Um, their names are Carissa and Colin. And so they did research uh, as part of their senior design project and also working with the professor. And so I also know a few other students that got into research earlier on before their senior year. Um, so there's just a lot of opportunities for working with professors and we have um, certain labs on campus where you can actually work with the professor um, on higher level equipment. So if you're also interested in this type of research, there is a club called Biomedical Engineering Society or BMES. Um, they're a club on campus and they host weekly meetings 
Um, and one of the cool things that they do is have professors or industry people come in and talk about the work that they're doing and their research. Um, and that's one of the reasons I kind of like got into uh, the idea behind microfluidics and things like that is because hearing from my professors and like their personal interests and their work uh, really is ins tr truly inspiring and also exposes you to like the different areas that you could do with bioengineering and what you can get into the field on uh, later on. Hi, my name is Isabella Morales. I'm a second year master's student studying robotics and mechatronics systems here at Santa Clara University. Um, I'm also a full-time TA here at the Innovation Zone. Uh, and I basically help out with uh, trainings for different types of equipment. So that could be like 3D printers and laser cutters. And additionally, I help host open hours, which is basically a time in the Innovation Zone here where students can basically come on over and work on their projects. Welcome to the Innovation Zone. Uh, the way I basically see this place is a, a very amazing uh, prototyping space open to all SU students, staff, and faculty. And so basically um, anyone involved in the SU community can get trained here on how to use different types of equipment. So that can include our very famous armadas of 3D, 3D printers or our laser cutters to, my, to the right of me. Um, and so there's a huge range of equipment here uh, that just fits all the different uh, fields of interest uh, for student, staff, and faculty. So again, they're just welcome here to use this space. And then we have specific trainings for each type of equipment. So that'll be 3D, 3D printers, laser cutters, uh, and then for our car tools, like so behind me. So drill press, miter saw, and band saw.